We posted this color on our Instagram story and asked our followers, which movie first comes to mind when you see this color? 90% of them said the same movie, La La Land. And if we search for La La Land on Google, all the images feature this purple scene with the famous yellow dress. In fact, we can ask anyone, even AI. What movie first comes to your mind when you think of colors purple and yellow? And it will answer La La Land. So why does everyone think of the same movie when they see purple? In this video, we'll answer that question. But in order to get to the answer, we need to explain how La La Land uses color to tell a story. For those who haven't seen the movie yet, you should probably watch it now. Or we'll have to spoil it for you. In a nutshell, La La Land is a musical that follows the love story of Mia, an aspiring actress, and Sebastian, a jazz musician, as they navigate the challenges of pursuing their dreams in Los Angeles. But as you have probably noticed, Los Angeles looks a bit different in this film than in real life. And this is exactly what the film's director Damien Chazelle wanted. It's incredibly exciting to fabricate a world. You allow yourself the freedom to have every color of the palette make a statement. You allow yourself the freedom to paint buildings whatever color you want. You get to adjust or subvert the reality around you. And I say this as someone whose first films as a student were documentaries. With La La Land, I wanted to get at reality in an indirect way. It's an emotional portrait of LA, not a realistic one. And this can be seen instantly at the beginning of the film. On the freeway after the opening song, Mia and Sebastian are both seen in white and brown in their cars respectively, while the rest of the dancers are in various colors, representing their disconnect from the traditional Hollywood glamour. Sebastian's search for traditional jazz revival and Mia's continual failed auditions, as each one gets pulled slowly into the world, and Mia at one of the initial parties, they are dressed in color. When Mia and Sebastian properly meet each other for the first time, they're each assigned one color. Mia is yellow, optimistic, perfectionistic, and exciting. Sebastian is red, headstrong, passionate, and proactive. Can I borrow what you're wearing? Why? Because I have an audition next week. I'm playing a serious firefighter. Not only does this bring us into their person, but it shows the current split nature of their relationship. After the party when they get to know each other better, Mia has adopted a red purse, the first connection between the pair. You might be thinking this is just complete coincidence. What if they just chose random colors because they look good, and I'm playing the English teacher trying to find some made-up connections to them? And that could be true, if the director of this movie wasn't Damien Chazelle. Color was a choice and a, and a production in and of itself, so that forced you to really think about color. We actually spent a whole week uh, deep, you know, early in prep, Linus, uh, Mary, Zafri is the costume designer, David Wasco, the production designer. All of us just sat around a table, went through each page of the script and talked about the color palette uh, and very minutely down to like the color of Emma's pencil and the notebook and like the color in her coffee shop of what her apron would be and uh, everything about Ryan's apartment and his coffee mug. Now that we know that every color in this movie was carefully chosen to help tell the story, it's interesting to look at the color yellow and what it means to this film. In storytelling, using single consistent colors serves as a way to create associations. Essentially, this means that we link a specific color to a particular subject or idea. Yellow in this movie is used sparsely, and that's what makes it special. The two main instances when yellow is used are Mia's dressed in a lovely night scene and Keith's shirt in the lighthouse scene. If we think about this, we can link the color yellow to change. Mia in yellow was a change to Sebastian's love life, and Keith in yellow was a change to his professional life. Notice that yellow in these scenes stands out because it's introduced into a color scheme that doesn't quite fit in. It creates a feeling of discordance. This discordance directs audiences' attention towards it. Incorporating a new color into an established scheme can be a powerful technique to convey a sense of unsettlement or change in the mood of a film. And that's exactly what La La Land does. This color is seen through the rise and fall of their time together. They are cloaked in indigo through their first romantic dance at the planetarium. Baby blue during the bittersweet, I will always love you, and deep purple in the heartbreaking final scene at the jazz club. Every time they share a significant moment or go through a new relationship stage, we see a different shade of purple depending on intensity of emotion. But why is this the color people associate the most with the movie? Well, there are two reasons. First, and the obvious one, are the marketing materials for the movie itself. Purple is used in all of the marketing materials, including the poster which obviously leads people to associate it with the movie. 
But the second reason is an interesting one, engraved in our psychology. People tend to remember and judge an experience based on its most intense and final moments, rather than considering the entire duration. This is called peak end rule, and it applies to every experience we have, including watching movies. This psychological bias is the reason why we often hear stories about the ending ruining a whole movie, and the reason why we remember the shark from Jaws so vividly, despite it having just four minutes of screen time. And it's also the reason why we connect the color purple to La La Land. As you already said, purple is present when Mia and Sebastian experience important moments together. Their first dance, Planetarium, the Lighthouse Cafe. All of these are intense peak moments in the film. And of course, the very ending of the movie. Being both a peak moment and an ending, also features the purple color scheme. Tricking our brain to remember this movie as a lot more purple than it was. And there are lots of examples like this. The Batman being one of the more interesting ones. We post these short videos on our Instagram and TikTok, where we generate the average color from every frame of a given movie. Someone commented that we should do the Batman next, saying it will be all red. When we generated the color barcode, this is what we got. The movie is 99% dark, but the 1% of that red scene is a peak moment near the end, tricking thousands of people into thinking the movie itself is a lot more red. But anyways, let's get back to La La Land. We still got one more color to talk about. Can you, can you grab my keys? What kind? It's a Prius. I mean, that, that doesn't help me. With a green ribbon? All right. At some point in the movie, their flat becomes green. It catches you a bit off guard, probably because it wasn't originally intended to be that way. It was a very late, late in the game decision to put that green light there and have Sebastian's apartment be sort of uh, uh, lit in this way. The decision was because I happened to be re-watching Vertigo the night before and got to the point where Kim Novak is in her purple dress against Jimmy Stewart's, uh, well, as Jimmy Stewart enters and she's, again, she's next to her window and there's the green neon light sort of bathing her in this green hue. And I just thought it was beautiful, so I called up Linus. And it was about 2 a.m. the day before we were gonna shoot this. And I asked if maybe we could actually switch the entire lighting setup that he had spent weeks designing for this apartment and have it be all green. And also switch out Emma's costume. I called up Mary as well, have it be purple. This spontaneous decision ended up playing a big part in the symbolism of the color. Remember the green dress that Emma's character wears about halfway through the movie, including the Griffith Observatory sequence. That was a rare outfit written into the script, that green would carry a baggage. So, when you later saw green in the movie, it would harken back to that lost, perfect moment in the romance. A lot of emotional subtext stems from that dress. What's so wonderful is that it doesn't feel like a dress born out of that pressure. And after that green dinner scene is when everything starts going downhill for their relationship. Maybe you just liked me when I was on my ass because it made you feel better about yourself. In fact, if we take the average color from every frame of the movie and create a stripe out of it, we can see the lack of vibrant and bright colors after that moment as their relationship falls apart. By the way, if you want this as a framed poster, check out the link in the description where you can order it. But it's not just the colors of the scenes that get darker after their relationship falls apart. The colors of Mia's costumes also start to fade. The idea for Mia is that she starts off it's a lot of color and vibrant color. There's a girlishness to her. And as the movie continues and as she becomes more mature and gets focused on her own play, the color starts to become less important. It's a little bit more desaturated. The color, the use of color on her becomes less and less. It's almost to the, like, to the point where she's in her one woman show and it's literally black and white. If you want to color grade your videos and photos like La La Land, Check out our Lutz and Lightroom profiles. If you're interested in recreating looks from other movies, check out our full collection of hundreds of movie-inspired Lutz and Lightroom profiles. And if you want to learn more about color grading, check out our color grading course. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.